Welcome to the Simply Vegan podcast, brought to you by the team at Vegan Food and Living, the UK's best-selling vegan magazine. I'm Holly Johnson, and each Tuesday I get together with my colleague Molly Pickering to share what we've been eating, what's got us thinking, and the new products that are worth trying. And don't miss our Thursday podcast, where we chat to some of the leading names in veganism. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, we'd love it if you hit the subscribe button as it helps us to rate in the charts. It also means you'll be alerted to every new episode of your favourite podcast. If you're anything like me, life can quickly become chaotic and finding fresh and nutritional vegan recipes can become another thing to add to the to-do list. Our best-selling magazine, Vegan Food and Living, is on hand to help. You can join us today and try an issue for just 99p by visiting veganfoodandliving.com forward slash podcast or using code podcast when you order with us. You'll not only receive the magazine to your door, but also have access to thousands of plant-based recipes at your fingertips in our digital magazine archive, which is fully searchable and simple to use. Join us today and make cooking delicious vegan food that bit more exciting by visiting veganfoodandliving.com forward slash podcast. Welcome to this week's podcast. It's Food Waste Action Week. So Molly and I are going to be talking about using up all those leftovers to help the planet as well as saving money. Um, but first, yeah, let's have a catch up, Moles. We've, we've met again for the second time in person, didn't we? On when was it Thursday Thursday can't even remember still hung over I know so we started off with cocktails didn't we yeah we did um they were nice actually I kind of always I don't know sometimes cocktail bars scare me because you don't know what they're going to be like but these ones are quite nice weren't they yeah I hate it when they're like really expensive but they don't taste like they've got any alcohol in them <laughs> no I know it's scary it's just <laughs> how many of these juices can I drink before I can't walk <laughs> Um, and then we went to the botanist in Bath this was Mm. our delayed Christmas do so how many of us were there about 20 I think so I'd say sort of just over 20 it was I don't know I don't know what I expected from the botanist because this is the first time going there but the building itself it was stunning it was so beautiful it was gorgeous yeah loads of like greenery everywhere and big high ceiling Um, the the vegan options were a bit limited, but they were tasty, especially after yeah. a few drinks. That burger, I was like <laughs> chomping away. <laughs> to be fair, I feel like by the time the main course come, we would have eaten anything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, there was a lot of prosecco on the table, and then oh. people kept ordering more drinks. And then I think at one point there was like shots of um, coconut vodka or something like that. Yeah, I think. That rings a bell. I think about having coconut tequila wasn't very nice. Not very good at that. Oh, I loved it. Did you? Oh, love oh, coconut. You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really good fun, wasn't it? And then, yeah. um, then you sort of had problems getting back to Bristol because the train station was closed. Uh, I <laughs> I went back into the office today and um, uh, one of the colleagues was there and I sort of explained the situation. I was like, I got to the train station at 10 o'clock. She was like, no, you didn't. <laughs> you did not get there at 10 o'clock we were still at the restaurant at 10 o'clock and then we went to a cocktail bar I think can't remember the name of it we did um but I'm not too sure what time we left there so I could have got there when the train station had closed and I have told everyone that the train station had closed early (laughs) (laughs) yeah I mean I think I got back to my hotel about I don't know 12 1 it was definitely after midnight uh maybe that that makes sense then (laughs) But after eating that huge meal, I got back to the hotel and I was like, oh, have you got any snacks? And um, <laughs> they said uh, pizza, like re- reeled off a few things. And in my drunken state, I said, oh, is it vegan pizza? Expecting them to say, oh, no, sorry. And they were like, yeah. yeah. So I just kind of ordered this pizza. <laughs> Honestly, I was so ashamed of myself and annoyed because last week I was doing like intermittent fasting, going to the gym loads. Oh, and then of course mate, went out, had worry. all that alcohol, burger and chips, starter, 
and then um, ate a whole pizza to myself in bed. <laughs> you know what, though? Life is about balance. I say it, I'm going to just get that tattooed on me. So every time I need a reminder of it, it's there to remind me that life is about balance. <laughs> it, is. it was just so nice to see you and so nice to yeah. see everyone from the company. Um it's just worth mentioning that um, so the company that we work for is called Anthem Publishing and they've launched a Red Cross appeal for what's mm-hmm. happening in Ukraine at the moment to support the people who are, um, you know, fleeing and um, stuck there. So you can head over to veganfoodandliving.com and find out all the information there about uh, what our company is doing to um, in terms of donations and how you can help too. Something else that we're doing as well at Vegan Food and Living is a few people might have seen this shared around recently. Um, it's a new campaign called um, Hashtag Cook for Ukraine. And essentially what it is, is you sort of dinner parties, work lunches, kind of bake sales, anything sort of like fundraising. Um, and the aim is to sort of bring a Ukrainian dish Um and everyone sort of brings something and then everyone eats and it brings everyone together and then everyone donates. Um, there is a dedicated Cook for Ukraine Just Given page. Um, I'm sure if you Google that, that will that will appear. Um, or, you know, alternative there, you know, Red Cross, UNICEF. There's lots of other appeals right now that are doing amazing work. So you were back in the office for the, well, the office was open for the first time in what two years? Two years, say. yeah, yeah. So obviously, I didn't go because I only just went to Bath for our, our party <laughs> on Thursday, so I couldn't get up there again today. But I will be in the office, and we will be recording yes. in the office together, won't we? At some point yes. soon. Um, and we're going to do a little photo shoot. Yeah, and... all of these amazing things. Yeah, but did you take all taking food today? Yes, we did. So we had, it was amazing. It was such a feast. And it was actually really interesting to see other people, like no one sort of brought in the same food. Um, It was a real sort of collection of dishes. So I did um, a butter bean stew. It had sort of tomatoes in there, rosemary, chili, garlic, a bit of dill, some parsley, all the lovely things that just everyone loves. So I had that. I had that. I had that all to myself. (laughs) (laughs) Did you share it? (laughs) I did share it. I made too much. I'm a feeder. I'll put my hands up. I am a feeder. I just, uh, yeah, I, but it went fine. It was beautiful. Um, And then I did a potato salad, um, which had, I sort of googled like Eastern European potato salads and it had sort of carrots in there. Um, traditionally, it's meant to have hard-boiled eggs, but obviously that wasn't in there. Yeah. Um, some dill, a bit of spring onion, obviously some lovely mayo, um, vegan mayo. And then someone else brought in like an aubergine and tomato sort of stew, which was really nice. Someone did uh, potato and onion like pancake things. Um, and our boss brought in... <laughs> a jar of fried carrot and pea mix which looked a lot like baby food but it was quite nice (laughs) (laughs) oh I'm so gutted I missed it apart from the jar of weird stuff um Mm. yeah I'm I'm making me really hungry I um I made the saltfish fritters you You made them I did yes (gasps) Oh my gosh, how did it go? I feel that's very strange. (laughs) Well, I just, I'm always looking for new ideas for things to cook Mm because it can get so boring, can't it? Um, So I was like, oh, those sound really yummy. So yeah, got the banana blossom, which this is the first time I've cooked with it. And it's so much better than jackfruit. Uh, It's my favorite thing now. I'm over jackfruit. I think it's great when other people do it, but for some reason, whenever I prepare it, I think I've just tasted it for so I've had that taste for so long and I I don't know banana blossom is my go-to now I think I just prefer the texture of it it's softer isn't it yeah it is um yeah so I just googled because I tried to find the Instagram account you mentioned but I know you said it wasn't vegan and you just adapted it so I just googled Caribbean saltfish fritters and then Mm -hmm. just literally copied it but didn't use fish I used the banana blossom 
Um, yeah, and they were a real hit. I did them in tacos with like a um, salsa and stuff, mango Oh salsa. my gosh, that sounds beautiful. Maybe I'll try that. Yeah. Maybe that's just exchanging recipes. Oh, I know, we're inspiring <laughs> each other. Yeah, so they were really yummy. Um, I was also a bit naughty. God, I've just seen, I've not stopped eating since I saw you. Um, <laughs> I tried the new um, Burger King thing. <sighs> Thing. So, thing. so Friday, I'm sat at my desk, got back from bath, hung over, sort of watching the clock a little bit, thinking, oh, I just need to like go and lie down. Um, <laughs> and I had the press release saying, you know, launching today nationwide oh. um, Burger King katsu range, which included two vegan options. Mm-hmm. And of course, I'm like, well, I need to try this for the podcast, of course. So <laughs> in the name of research. <laughs> exactly. So um, yeah, off we went. And um, yeah, I had the, it's like, a, obviously not chicken, um, but like a chicken burger. And it had in like a long bun and it had lettuce and um, I think crispy onion and pickles mm. and like a katsu sauce. Um it was really yummy, actually. Really good hangover food. I don't know yeah. if I'd have it again. I'm not sure. I, maybe I would. Did you have the Royale, like the original vegan Royale? No, I haven't tried that. No. So th- that one is really nice. As you say, it's a treat. Um, you can't be in that stuff every day because it's just obviously not very good. It's not good for you. Um, but it's once in a while. Yeah. It's naughty. I needed it. <laughs> But yeah, oh dear, it's just, um, yeah, the whole weekend has just been <laughs> very indulgent. And um, now it's Monday. I'm like, right, come on, back on the wagon. Do it. Yeah. Um, well, let's let's talk about Food Waste Action Week then. So Waitrose have a brilliant section in their weekend. Um, it's, you know, the free weekend newspaper that they do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they've got 100 ways to reduce food waste. So I thought I'd just read a few of them out. So fruit that needs eating up. We are not big fruit eaters in this house. I have to force everybody, including myself. I don't know why. I just don't think any of us have got a particularly sweet tooth. So you can just see it slowly going more wrinkled and you're like, no. Um, Yeah. So they recommend stewing fruit to make a crumble. That's a really good Mm -hmm. idea. Or a compote. Um, which we actually did at the weekend because my my son had made um shortbread at school and he was really excited bless him because he'd learned to to make um shortbread and I said well they don't have egg in them do they it's only butter that wouldn't be vegan so if we just use vegan butter we can make them and have them at home so he made them for our um after we had our uh salt fish tacos he made (gasps) them for pudding and I did a little compote that's um, so nice. Yeah, it's really nice. It's like a, a little dinner party because I think everyone's just, I don't know, feeling a bit blue, aren't they, at the moment? I think with everything yeah. going around the world. Um, and, yeah, I just wanted to cheer everyone up a little bit. I think it's quite it's scary. little things, yeah. yeah. And I think it's quite scary for the children, all this mm-hmm. you know, talk of war. And, um, yeah. Um, yeah, freeze fruit. So I freeze bananas and then use them to make ice cream. You literally just blend yeah, them. Yeah, that's a good idea. And add whatever you want. Like, say you wanted it to be like peanut butter ice cream, just add in a bit mm. of peanut butter. Um, it's Yeah, it's amazing how um, how like ice cream it is. Yeah, I've started doing that with raspberries, actually. Not making ice cream, but just freezing them. Because I don't know about you, but every time I buy raspberries, within a day, there's mould on them. And I try and buy them sort of, you know, as fresh as possible, like date wise and stuff. But for some reason, within two days, it's just got mold on them. So I've started freezing them and then I have them in my porridge in the morning, stick them under the tap for a little bit um, and they sort of defrost then. So that's also a good way because I hate rotten fruit, yeah. especially when it's so expensive. God, yeah, fresh raspberries are so expensive. And every now mm-hmm. and again, I'll buy them. And it's one thing that everyone loves. They don't even make it home. Like, if we're in the car, <laughs> everyone's eating them like sweets. And oh, then I love them. Two left. So I think actually buying um, them pre frozen is a lot cheaper, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I think you do get more sort of for your money as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, and again, you can freeze stuff like spinach, um, 
like rocket anything like that that's mm. you know you because often you have too much of it don't you especially with spinach some of the bags are massive yeah so bung that in the freezer and then stalks so I don't know about you but like I get through loads of you know you have the stalk from the cauliflower or the broccoli or whatever mm. and that just goes in the food waste doesn't it so yeah um waitrose suggests making up a stock or yeah that's a good idea soup just chuck it in the soup because like once it's blended up yeah exactly what I've been doing if I'm doing like a sort of vegan cauliflower cheese which I know I always bang on I don't like cheese but we move um (laughs) I sort of add those sort of green bits the green leaves from the cauliflower I add that in and it's sort of it kind of goes like a cabbage when it's baked it's beautiful it's really nice god that's clever yeah, I know. Yeah. Just, you know, just some ideas. Amazing. <laughs> um, if you are cooking like a roast dinner and you've got some leftover gravy, put that into, um, what is, what are they called? Ice cube tray. Stop. Yeah. Gravy ice cubes. So when you want to, you know, when you're making a dish and you need a bit of gravy, then just pop out a few of those. Pieces Genius. I know. It's amazing. Oh, Wow. I'm inspired. Another one that I've actually seen in the recent um, vegan food and living issue was um, like pakoras made from carrot peelings and potato peelings. Uh, So you sort of create a little batter from cornflour, water, a few spices, um, sort of put them all in the batter. And then you've got these beautiful bargy pakora things. Oh, yum. I love that. That's a good, that's a good hack. I love pakoras too. If I could eat fried savory things for the rest of my life I think I could <laughs> <laughs> we mustn't we must be um another one is pickling things isn't it so things mm. like cauliflower cabbage anything like that you can pickle make kimchi yeah um, sauerkraut which is really really good for you so that's a really good one courtesy of Waitrose um mushrooms it says not to store them in plastic or airtight containers because it prevents airflow and speeds up um spoilage um which is which is good to know because you buy them don't you like if you buy them in a supermarket yeah covered in plastic you just just chuck them in the fridge and then they start to you get that condensation don't you and they yeah they go a bit wrinkly yeah, but it says um, if they do go brown, don't bin them. Just peel the outer layer and discard any dry bits. So, oh, that's a good hack. It's good to know. Um, have you, do you follow Max Lamana on Instagram? Yes, I do. The No Waste Chef. Yeah, so he's brilliant. Yeah, I think is he Irish, but he's it lives in New York. Oh, I don't know. I'm not too I'm, sure. I might have just made that up. I think he lives in New York. <laughs> I think he looks Irish and I just somehow invented that he was. I don't know. Um, I need to do a bit more research. I have tried to get him on the show before. So okay. Max, if you're listening, please come on the show and talk to us. Because Tell us if you're Irish. <laughs> yes, we need to know these important things. Uh, no, but he's just brilliant. He does loads and loads of videos and he's literally like, um, yeah, the king of like super speedy dishes made. Yeah, he's leftovers. really good. Should we do a few reviews? <gasps> Let's go. Let's go. I feel like we should have like a review sort of um, theme tune to we send should. us into the next the next part of the episode. We actually should, shouldn't we? <laughs> That's I'll, actually I'll... a really good idea. I know. <laughs> Okay, I'll I'll give it a go. I'll try and do it. <laughs> I'm not the most technical, so uh, yeah, I do my best with all the music and stuff. <laughs> um, well, Crosstown Chocolate. So Crosstown, they are are they fully vegan? They're based in London, aren't they? No, they're not, they're not fully, fully vegan. vegan. But they started off. Uh, it was donuts, wasn't it? Yes, amazing donuts. Can I just add? Beautiful. Yeah. Not um, that I've ever tried them, but they look amazing. And now they've kind of expanded. So they've got their own chocolate range. Uh, it's not cheap, five ninety five a bar at crosstown.co.uk. But this is kind of really nice special chocolate, isn't it? This is like birthday chocolate. If you really sort of are struggling for a gift, but, you know, you can't really think of something, this chocolate is just the best one. Yeah, it's really yummy. So they do a coffee one, um, a yuzu and passion fruit. So yuzu is the, is it Japanese? like yes. citrus yeah yeah and then a dark chocolate so I really like these I think yuzu was my least favorite only because I don't really 
yeah, I don't like yuzu. We got sent a yuzu mayonnaise and it's just, I don't know, it's just a bit, maybe a bit tangy for me. Yeah, it is. It's an acquired taste, but that one was my favourite. I think it's What's sort it? of, I just love passion fruit flavour. Um, oh. So I just, yeah, all over that. Amazing. So good. Edit Yum. within sort of three mouthfuls. <laughs> really? <laughs> Oh, I love it. Yeah, so uh, it's a really nice brand. What they've got something new out as well, haven't they? Have you seen we've got the donuts coming? Hot crust bun <gasps> donuts. Oh my god. We got hot crust bun donuts coming. Oh my god, yum. Wow. <laughs> Mind blown. I love a crossover, like a cronut, you know, like a croissant <sighs> and a donut and things it's... like that. Yeah, I'm literally so excited for these to come. I'm doing so bad on my gluten-free, but I don't care because I'm having a hot cross bun donut. <laughs> it's, it's your job, Molly. You have to I do know, it. I know, I know. It's fine. <laughs> I'll just eat probiotic. Probiotics, yeah? Is that what I should eat? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Free probiotics. Um, the other chocolate we tasted recently was a new vegan range from Lint. Um, so they do a vegan smooth and a vegan hazelnut. They're usually three pounds. I think at the moment, if you're quick, they're 250 at Sainsbury's. These were really yummy. These were nice. It was nice to have some lint. I've never had lint in ages. And that was kind of sort of growing up. You'd have lint at Easter, sort of, you know, Christmas and all that. So it was quite nice to have a you know, a bit of lint chocolate. Yeah, I love the hazelnut one. Yeah, that was, that was good. Really smooth and creamy. We're going to be doing Easter reviews, aren't we, soon? We've got the Easter eggs yeah, arriving. So. I know. I thought Easter was this month. It's not. I need to get that out of my head. <laughs> no. So we're mid-March now and it's yeah. not till mid-April. What I found last year, though, doing this podcast is that by the time Easter came, it's like I've eaten all the ve- all the vegan <laughs> Easter eggs. I don't want any more. Thank you. Easter's finished. <laughs> yeah, I'm done with it. Um, but yeah, we've got... Easter eggs coming from Nomo, yeah. Hotel Chocolat, um, Doisy and Dam. Ooh, that's exciting. Yeah, so lots. And I, I know Lidl's have got like a lint rip-off bunny, actually. So that'll be a good one to try. Are lint doing... I don't know whether this is just like fake news. Maybe it's not fake news. I'm being dramatic. But are they doing a vegan bunny? I think Or am so. I dreaming? I think they are. But I, I don't know. We'll get back to you on that one. Need to look into it. And then we taste tested some vegan oyster fish and soy sauces, didn't we? Yeah. Um, from Soyzias, S O Z Y E, and it's made. They're made with um Scottish seaweed, which is really exciting. Yeah. Um, obviously, soy sauce is vegan. Um, however you know lots of people have allergies to soy don't they yeah it's also um their soy sauce is gluten-free as well love it yes inclusive yes you can have that (laughs) um so yeah so the fish sauce sort of has that umami flavor yeah doesn't it and the oyster sauce is sort of a little bit thicker and sweet yeah it was so nice to have these sort of like back in the cupboard because I obviously I do a lot of of Asian cooking and these you know sauces are just staples so it's so nice to just have that option did like a stir fry just a simple stir fry and just having like a bit of oyster sauce in there oh amazing and Yeah. yeah it's really nice with the seaweed sort of flavor in it it's beautiful yeah, they're really yummy. They're four ninety nine, and um, you can find them at soyzy dot com. They're also available at Planet Organic. So, give those a try. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, I just have so many sources now. I love having like a big, oh, big selection. Me too. Of, of... I need a bigger cupboard. I need a bigger house for my sources. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for all my condiments. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce isn't vegan, is it? That's made with anchovies. Oh, so Worcestershire uh, sauce is my favourite. Yeah, so that's one to watch out for if you're kind of new to veganism. But they do mm-hmm. do, I think it's Biona, do a vegan. Yeah, that's the one I've got. I yeah. think if you go into um, sort of health food shop, there's a few that do it. Um, but yeah, the Biona is like the main one. Well, just to finish off today's episode, we had a lovely message from Jasmine Thurston who I think she was listening to an older episode before you were around, Molly. (gasps) 
back I in the old days, back okay. in the old days, back yeah. in the old times. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the, my co-host before Molly um, came on the scene last summer was Gabriella Clark. And um, she's a yoga teacher and she left the podcast to go and have a little baby boy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Jasmine was just asking for advice, like on where to find information on being vegan and pregnant, because I think you can sort of freak out a little bit, can't you? Um you know, am I getting all the right nutrients? Even if you're not vegan, you sort of start thinking, well, yeah. Um, should I be eating, you know, anything different? Do I need any supplements? So I contacted Gabriella and here's what she had to say. Hi, Jasmine. Um, first of all, congratulations on your pregnancy. Um, I just want to start by reassuring you that having a vegan pregnancy is a perfectly healthy choice. Sometimes at the beginning, when being pregnant was also new to me, I found it was really easy to start doubting every decision I was making and whether it was right for me and my baby. But in hindsight, I know choosing to be vegan throughout my pregnancy and beyond was the healthiest decision I could have made. Practically speaking, I made sure I was taking the right vitamins. So for me, that was folic acid and vitamin D3 until 12 weeks. Um, after that, I switched to a vegan prenatal vitamin. Personally, I love the one by Terra Nova, um, and I still take that now as it's a great supplement for breastfeeding too. I did ask to have my vitamin levels checked in my first trimester via a blood test, which my GP arranged. This was more for my peace of mind than anything else, so perhaps something you could also ask your GP about too. They were really happy to arrange it for me. All my levels came back really healthy, so this gave me the reassurance I needed to just keep going as I was. At about six weeks before my due date, a routine blood test that you have um, around 32 weeks, I think it is, picked up that my iron level was very slightly low, um, not at all anything that they were concerned about and actually really common in all pregnancies. So alongside my multivitamin, I started taking Spartone liquid iron sachets. Um, just for the last few weeks to make sure I had good levels of iron for labour and for my recovery as well. Um, Other than supplements, I just made sure I was eating a varied and balanced diet where possible, ate when I was hungry and listened to my body. I was really lucky not to suffer with any sickness, so that helped. I reminded myself that my diet was healthy, balanced and nourishing and that my baby could only benefit from that. I would also hugely recommend finding something you can do to help you stay active as well. I always think diet and exercise goes hand in hand. For me, it was a daily yoga practice and this was a huge factor in how strong I felt during labour. And for me, I believe also how quickly I recovered physically after giving birth. Um. Personally, I found a lot of online resources and forums more stressful than helpful. There's still such limited advice to support vegan mums in pregnancy, breastfeeding and then raising vegan children. So I often found they were either limited in the information or subtly quite discouraging. So I found it much more useful to just seek out other vegan mums and ask them questions. Um, There's a vegan cafe where I live and I uh, met a few really lovely mums there who gave me lots of tips. I ended up birthing a healthy, beautiful, huge £9.6 baby boy on my living room floor who is now almost eight months old and loves smoothie bowls and tofus and is a little vegan himself. Brilliant. Oh, well, it's so nice to hear from Gabriella again. Yeah. Um, so what, what have you got on for the rest of the week, Molly? Um, I'm going to see the new Batman tomorrow. Are you? <laughs> That's so random. It's not random. Yes, I'm going to go and see the new Batman tomorrow. Um, what else have I got coming on this week? Get my nails done on Saturday. You You have always got good nails. Mine are hideous. Well, I'm going to be speaking to Dan McKernan this week. Um, have a listen on Thursday morning. He is the star of Saved by the Barn, which is an American uh, show. And he's he runs a sanctuary out in the uh, USA. Oh, exciting. So, yeah, I follow him on social media and I, I must admit I have a bit of a crush on him. Ah! <laughs> 
cute. I think his videos have gone viral of him. Like, have you seen it? The parrot that's no. like rubbing its face against his. Oh my god! Beard. Stop. You've got to look him up. So yeah, I hope he's not listening to this because it'll be really embarrassing. <laughs> we'll have to record with him. Um, but yeah, so I'll be speaking to him. So have a listen on Thursday, and Molly and I will be back next Tuesday. 